Hello, Steady on here, um, and today I'm going to be talking about the spawn function in Roblox, how to use it, when to use it, uh, what it does. Um, yeah, uh, sorry about uh, I don't know the the quality of my voice. I have a, a cold, but I thought I may as well make this video anyway. Um, so the spawn function is basically something that runs alongside your script. So if you it's like having two scripts in the game. However, instead of using an event to communicate with, between those two scripts, like you might say, have a timer script which times a certain thing and then shows it on a brick or something, and then you have another script which manages, uh, I don't know, whatever the timer's doing, such as like a game, the, the whole game scripts it, right? And then you send an event to the timer script which then shows the timer. I mean, you could do that, but this way you could do something like using the spawn function you can run a function within your script at the same time as your script is running so here's what i mean right so we're going to try that example i've just uh, thought of so we're going to have a timer here uh i'm gonna i don't really care what it looks like okay and then we're going to have a surface gui inside it call it timer you don't need to do that, just doing that for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, and inside this I'm going to put a text label, I'm going to make it the full size of the brick. Oops, not 10, <laughs> 1. Uh, and then I'm going to scale the text to the size, doesn't really matter, right? And on here I'm going to have, I don't know, a countdown from 100, say. It doesn't actually matter what I put on there for now. I'm also going to make it scale to the right size. Uh, what's this? 150. Right, okay, so now we have a brick with a number on it, right? Um, for the sake of this, I'm just going to remove the background. It's not important, I'm just doing it because it looks nicer. Um, okay, so we have this brick with a timer on it. Um, and let's say we also have, uh, I'm going to name this time brick. Let's say we also have in the workspace a script, actually, you know, better to have it in the server script service. So we have a script in the server script service called uh, game script or something, right? Um, and I'm just, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to start it immediately when you start the game. So, uh, let's say, I don't know, it says print. Let's, let's say the game is managed through print, so you'll see everything in the output to do the game. So let's say uh, the game is now starting. And at this point I'm going to make a function called time game, right? Now, what this function is going to do is it's going to use the... Um, brick in the workspace, so uh, I'm going to find the brick, so I'll say timer brick it was game, workspace, timer brick, uh, and then yeah, okay, and then we're going to say time game, we're going to say for i equals 1, and let's say we're going to time for 100 seconds, like I said before uh, do oops, do um, timer brick, timer so I think that's right timer, yep, yeah. uh Text label text equals 100 take away i, right? So, what this will do is it count down from 100. I also need to put a wait here because otherwise it won't work. Right, so if I was to do this, um, if I'm going to run this uh, function, then it will yield. So, it will stop the script until this function has finished, which will take 100 seconds, right? But let's say at the same time I wanted to, I don't know, every. Let's not watch reduce, sorry. <laughs> let's say I just wanted to print random messages like, hello, this is. Hello, the game is currently running or something. Um, and then we have. Whatever, right? So we have. Wait, we have a few, a few of these. So we're running these throughout the game or something. Uh, like this. Right. So I'll just I'm just doing this for the sake of this. Obviously, you probably wouldn't do this in the actual thing if you were going to make a game. Um, right. Okay. So if I was to run this now, what would actually happen is it would say the game is now starting. It would run this script. It would time 100 seconds, um, and then it would say hello. The game is currently running, which obviously it isn't because the time is finished. But 
if we do this instead, we say spawn, and then we put this function inside it, we remove these two brackets here, then let's see what happens. So, as you can see, this timer is, t is counting down, and here it says the game is currently running, five seconds has passed. So actually what's going on right now is, it's printing all the stuff in the output, but it's also running the timer at the same time from just one script in the server script service here, right? Uh, and that's a result of the spawn function. So this is pretty simple, I've uh, covered it pretty fast actually, I was a lot faster than I was expecting. Um, but, one of the things that I've always had trouble with the spawn functions uh, is, well it took me a while to figure out how to do this, is the fact that when you want to put arguments in the uh, function, so if I want to call time game, but I also want to put a specific amount of time I want to time. So, so maybe it's a different amount of time every time. Um, so I'll put time about here, uh, and I want to pass time the amount of time. I'm sorry, I'm just going to replace these with time about. Um, so I want to replace. So let's say I want to uh, put a amount of time into this function every single time. So let's just generate a amount of time. Uh, math random, let's say between, I don't know, uh, 100 and 120, right? So we're going to send, so uh, now we've got a random number between 100 and 120, I'm just going to add a math random seed so it's different every time. Sorry, just one second, tick, right. Uh, and then we're going to say, um, so, you'd expect, you'd usually do this, you'd say random time, right? No. Well, yes. <laughs> But not like that. What you actually do is you have to make a function inside the spawn function. So you put function, click this, and then at the end you want to put end. Right? Uh, yeah, I think that's right. And then it will send, it will actually call this function inside this function, which is inside spawn. So it's actually running. So what's actually happening is spawn is running this function, which is running this function, uh, which means that it will send this argument over into this thing. So we can have a look at it. Let's just hope it works, otherwise it's going to be a bit embarrassing for me. Um, and it has. See? It's a random time. So uh, I think that's it, really. Uh, I've tried to make this tutorial as easy to understand, as quick uh, to make as possible. Uh, the spawn function took me a while to figure out, so I thought I'd make a video on it, because I've been trying to think of things to make videos on, and I can't really think of any. Um, but I remember this is, was one of the things I kind of found hard for a while, so I thought I'd make a video on it. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it. Please do, because uh, it, it supports me a lot on a pretty small channel. Uh, subscribe as well for more scripting videos. I've basically dedicated my channel to only scripting videos now. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.